What's up turtles? Crick here today with Black Outdoors and I'm going to be doing a video, a simple basic how-to video of how to use a compass and a map. And basically what you're going to be doing is getting a degree or a line of travel from the compass or from the map using the compass. And in the video I'm specifically showing how to uh, understand the basic parts of a compass, the working parts. Um, two, you're going to be able to look and orient a map, make sense of a map. Three, you're going to be able to get a bearing from the map using your compass. And four, you're going to be able to transfer the bearing to the compass and navigate, use that bearing to navigate through the woods and your line of travel. Now these are the basic working parts of the compass for the sake of this video we're going to be using. Now I've done a review on this uh, compass before, the Silver Ranger 515CL, which is a very feature rich compass. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it very basic and we're going to just get the, the sort of the logic and philosophy behind using a compass and a map. Starting here inside the needle housing, I have, there's the, the magnet, magnetized needle. And as you can see, when I'm going to move the compass, this needle is going to stay <coughs> pointed in one direction as I rotate the compass. The needle is always going to point. It's magnetized with the earth magnetic fields. And that's important to know. Now up here, the index, right above where the north is, there's a little tick, a little V that's known as the index. And that's where you're going to be if you get a bearing or if you want to do east, west, south, anything like that. You're going to put your degree of the travel you want to put to this index right up here above the north tick on the dial. And this compass has a sighting mirror, which we're going to use for the video. Not all compasses have that. Some lower, uh, lower models are just going to be this clear base plate. They're not going to have this, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use this since it's here. And then this, the dial moving around that rotates, is how you adjust your bearing or line of travel. And these are the basic parts of the compass we're going to be using today. All right, now we have our map. And this is a fictitious topographic map I've drawn just for the sake of this video. It does possess a north arrow and a scale down here. And I don't care what map, what sort of map you get, if you're going to get a USGS topo map or a map of a boardwalk around a national park, the most important things you want to look for on a map is a north arrow, which will tell you how to orient the map, and a scale. And I didn't really make this to scale or anything. It's just all made up in my head. I'm topo lines. And like I said, now to start, you're going to need to know where you are on a map for a map to be useful and to find a bearing. And <clears throat> for the sake of this purpose, I'm going to say we're right down here. I'm going to make a little mark. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be doing it in uh, permanent mark. But if you have a map, you can do it in pencil, you can draw on it, write on anything you want, you can erase it and the map's good to go. So you can use multiple different directions, bearings, notes, anything you want. And now, I'm saying but I have no idea what's up here. We're just in the forest, we're going for a hike, and this is where I know I am. Say there's a trailhead, park, and spot, whatever. Now as I'm looking at this map, I'm not going to go into great detail about how to read a topo map, which I can do a video on if, if it's desired, but... I can see this peak right here, just the way these topo lines are arranged. I know this is a peak elevation here. There's one over here. I'm probably going to, you know, they're going to be probably beautiful views if there's no uh, forest cover. But for the sake of this video, we're going to assume this is all forested. And we want to use our compass to get a line of travel. And on this side of the water here, I see there's some drainages really flat over here, maybe a few rolling hills. Nothing major, but I have this river running here, and I have this other leg of it coming down here. Okay, that out of the way. I'm standing here. I want to figure out where I want to go. Now, as I'm looking at the map, I see this island up here on the river. And I can tell the river widens and these really spaced out topo lines here is probably going to be, mean a floodplain, which is going to be a really resource rich area. Riparian species of, you know, flora, you're going to have uh, animals come in here to probably feed, eat, breed, all that stuff. So it's probably going to be a really cool setting. And this is where I want to go. So I'm going to just put a dot for the sake of right here on the side of this hill right here because once I get up here I can probably get a good view of the river and I'm gonna have to traverse this mountaintop or hill but it's forested maybe I'm not going to get a view up here to see where I'm really going but that's why we're gonna have our compass and line of travel to help us get through the forest accurately and once I have my, my starting point my ending point I'm gonna take my compass 
and I, I would I do have a pencil line drawn here but it's probably hard to see in the video but basically you're gonna take line A or point A and point B with your compass get as parallel as you can as tight to it and once you got that there you're gonna put a little bit of pressure on the compass and the map to make sure your compass doesn't move now the next part the north arrow on the compass of the dial which is here I'm gonna rotate this until this north line of the compass is going to run parallel to my north arrow on the map. If you can imagine an imaginary line coming up, nor running north and south out of my compass and the north arrow, one of these two lines parallel. I'm going to move this until I think see, that's right where I want it. And there are smaller lines inside the compass to help you do that. And if this is a real topographic map, you're going to have section lines, township and range, all these other lines to help you get really accurate that are going to be closer to the compass. But for the sake of the video, I kept the map simplified. Now once I think I have my compass accurately on my, on my line of travel, I think I have my north parallel to the north on the map, I'm going to have my degree. And then where the degree is going to show up is the index, which I've explained earlier what that is. And looking about here, it's about 30 degrees. And that makes sense. That makes sense because if, if we're looking at the map, here's my starting point. And I know north, 0 degrees, 360. I know east is 90 and 45 degrees northeast and I can eyeball that so I know my line of travel just before I even touch my compass is going to be north of northeast and it's something you're it's going to come with practice but it's a good skill to be able to have okay now that I have my compass and my bearing let's get the compass and show you how to use this in the woods okay now that I have my degree or bearing or line of travel at the index where I need it, my dial turned to the index. I'm going to rotate the compass, compass to get a rough direction of where that means. When the magnetic uh, needle, the red part, lines up underneath with the outline of the needle. You can see how I rotate it, rotate it, until roughly that's about where the direction going this way is where I'm going to be going. So once I have that, I'm going to put it in front of my body and sort of square myself up. With, where, with the direction I'm going to be going. Just have a general direction, sort of look at the train before I even start moving, kind of figure out where I'm going, any obstacles in my immediate, in my immediate path. Now to get really accurate readings with a compass to walk through the forest, we're going, to call, we're going to shoot a line of travel or bearing. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to keep the compass right in front of me right here and try to keep this needle lined up in the outline of the needle and trying to walk through the forest with each turn, each step, each step I take, try to try to readjust. It's very inaccurate and you're going to be staring at the compass the whole entire time, which is not going to afford you to let you observe anything around you. So what you do is, this is where the sighting mirror comes in handy, as it's on this compass, I'm going to use it. I'm going to bend it at about 45 degree angle, maybe more depending on your height and your liking. I'm going to hold the compass out in front of me at arm's length, at eyesight, and it's going to have to be at the height of your eyes. That's why you need the, the mirror to reflect the dial. And once I accurately get the needle where I think it's right in, I'm going to use this sight right here where my finger's pointing, almost as you would a firearm sight when you're looking down the barrel of a firearm. Instead of aiming this at an object that I want to hit with a firearm, basically anything that's in my aim is going to be considered a target. And now I want to find the target that's farthest away from me, that's directly in my line of travel, being on my 30 degrees. And once I have that, I can put the compass away. I picked out a tree that's really, that's really far off in the distance, as far as I can see. I'm going to take a couple steps, maybe, you know, take a couple steps, look around, look around this way, that way, make sure I really understand the object that I've chosen to walk to. And I, because, you know, if, say if you pick a tree and I'm in a, in a very forested area, which is kind of a pain in the butt to do this method of travel with a compass, it can blend in very easy and you could think it's one tree, you know, and it was, you know, in actuality it's a different tree and all that. But you have to really kind of ingrain what your object's going to be that you're walking towards. And once I have that, I'm going to just walk directly towards the tree that I've chosen or a rock. And 
also what that's going to really help you keep an accurate line is if, if there's a feature in front of me, say there's a stream I can't cross or a bunch of blowdown that I can't get across, I can still pick out where my object is that I'm walking towards. I can look at it before I cross the, cross the you know, debris or stream. I can look ahead and see, okay, right there's my line of travel. Or on that side of the creek's where I need to be. And you know, this is where I came from. And I'm looking here, okay, and there's the rock I want to get to. And then I can walk around the object and get back on my line of travel without picking up my compass again. And then once I've reached the point of where I want to go and say it's going to be this tree for the sake of the video, this is where I ended up. This is the first object I've sighted with this compass. I'm going to reach here, get my compass out on the degree I've already chosen for my line of travel and do the same exact thing. I'm going to hold it up, find out where my 30 degrees is, pick a new object, put my compass away and walk to that new object. I'm just going to repeat this and repeat this until you get to your destination. It's a very accurate way to travel. But like I said, in the forest it's going to be a little bit difficult because it's really thick. A lot of things look similar but it's a very accurate way of traveling. And I hope this video is informative. I hope it was helpful. Leave comments, uh, berate me, anything you like, anything you see fit. And this is Crick signing out with Back Outdoors. Later, Turtles.